I'm halfway between Klamath Falls, Oregon and Roseburg, Oregon, my home. Uh, just heading back from a really fun couple days, actually a day and a half, uh, in Klamath Falls where I grew up in Southern Oregon, but there's an amazing college there called Oregon Tech. Uh, Oregon Tech is, uh, man, it's, it's uh, continuously uh, rated among the top colleges on the West Coast, oftentimes some of the top colleges in the country when it comes to value, when it comes to expertise in engineering, computer science, and stuff like that. And I was fortunate enough to graduate from there uh, with none of those degrees, <laughs> with a business and marketing degree. Uh, an entrepreneurship minor, but uh, anyway, I just fortunate enough to, to spend some time with some students there and some faculty, and we're working on some ways that we can get more entrepreneurs, and more businesses coming out of that university, and uh, it's just one really exciting thing that I'm able to do uh, as CEO of the company I run called Carrot, a software company. And many of you guys listening to this podcast, this episode of the Carrot Cast are likely familiar with me from that business, from Carrot. Uh, you might be a real estate investor yourself or a real estate agent or possibly just followed our journey along the way uh, as we've started this company and grown it into a you know, multiple, multiple uh, million dollar a year revenue business, uh, growing really fast, uh, revenue's been, been doubling. Uh, and along with that comes having to build out a team. And that's one question that I get asked quite a bit from you know, from our real estate investor clients, from other entrepreneurs and other startup people. And uh, I put out something the other day uh, on Facebook just to kind of get a gauge for what types of things that people would love to kind of pick my brain for that I could lend value uh, to you for in a podcast. And uh, one of the most popular suggestions in that Facebook thread was on hiring and building out a great team. And I think that's something that is likely going to take multiple podcast episodes. Maybe we do a series of them. But I was just kind of inspired after leaving that event. I had two of my awesome team members there in Klamath Falls at the talk that I gave at the school. We had a really good chance to talk. And also we had some other people who were really interested in and fired up at possibly joining Carrot. Some really amazing students, some of the top ones in the class. So I think it's just a timely uh, episode to do and then we'll pile it on and do a, another episode or two that are on the more specifics and different part of the hiring process. Now, I'm going to toss a caveat out there. And also, if you haven't noticed, I am driving. Uh, I am also safely driving. I'm, I'm hands off. But there might be some background. Um, we're going to try to edit it out. But there might be some background behind the scenes. So if you can get past that, awesome. We're going to have a good time here on this episode of the Carrot Cast. Um, and also, this this kind of lends itself to an obvious segue that uh, you know many many times we as as content marketers, us as as, on, as entrepreneurs, um, when we're looking at doing content marketing, we we for some reason think that we've got to be you know in a studio, we've got to have all this planning, um, all this stuff, and and like I said, I was actually getting ready to. Uh, you know, just pop this through to my assistant and say, hey, can you put this on the calendar for me to record next week? But I said, you know what, I'm driving and I, I really, really like to use drives as productivity time to have phone calls or something. So we'll test it out and see how uh, driving and doing a podcast works. If the audio quality turns out okay, then we may do a little more. So let me, let me kind of peel back a little bit and cast a vision here, okay? So first of all, uh, one thing that I that I've found out over the years and the businesses I've I've ran and grown um, is is business with others is definitely a lot more enjoyable than business solo. And I know there's I know there's a common thread out there if you if you're online, you know one of the one of the things that a lot of people market, a lot of the quote unquote gurus, is hey, you know, work out of your home in your pajamas, no employees. Uh, you know, none of the headache or hassle of this and that. And I tried that route. You know, I tried that route for about four years with my previous businesses. And I'm not going to say that you can't do it. You totally can. Um, I am going to say it wasn't for me, though. It wasn't for me because it became very isolating, um, even though I was talking with people every day. Uh, it's, it's also really hard to wrap people into the big vision, the big mission, to really have a true purpose that that you and the whole team are just fired up to, to work every day towards if you guys aren't an actual team, if it's all outsourcers or if it's all virtual assistants, okay? And and that to me is a huge, huge, huge core differentiator. 
If there's no other reason to build a team around your business, to me, it's exactly for that reason, to build a great team where you guys can all go toward a common purpose, a common goal, not just revenue goals. You're looking to make a very specific impact on the world. And, and it's really hard to mentally and emotionally wrap people into it unless they are an employee or unless they have some sort of skin in the game there. Uh, if they have a bunch of clients and you're just one of the clients, there's no way you're getting that mind space. There's no way you're getting that attention and that passion in there. Uh, if it's a VA overseas and, and you're their only client, likely they're still very, very, it's going to be very, very hard to wrap them into your mission, into your purpose and make it a crazy, crazy, crazy enjoyable business that goes beyond the dollar, goes beyond the revenue. Okay. So I had to make this mindset shift myself. This is about five or six years ago. And the very, very first person, we talked about this in some of the other episodes of the Carrot Cast, but the very first person that I suggest people hire, if you are a high quick start, low follow through, like I am, and I'll explain what that means here in a bit, is someone to help you organize. Uh, you're probably an executive assistant, a personal assistant, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call that role. Uh, that's one of the first people that you should likely hire. And I alluded to high quick start, low fall through here a second ago. So kind of behind the scenes, raise your hands here uh, if you are one of the two, okay? So you're, you're likely one of these two. So are you the type of person who loves ideas? You, you're a visionary, you can, you can cast a vision. Oftentimes people say, man, you've got a vision. Um, that you are okay with a lot of with a lot of different things going on. It's really hard sometimes for you to start a project and finish it. Sometimes you might have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten projects started at once, and all of them halfway done. If you're the type of person who has books on your nightstand and several books that you've started and haven't finished, if you're the type of person who loves strategy, you love brainstorming how you can dominate the world or create this marketing campaign or whatever, but when it comes to actually implementing that thing that you brainstormed, you have a tough time with. Um, that, that to a T explains me. Uh, explains me. And if you haven't taken the Colby test, it's the Colby test, K-O-L-B-E, I believe it is. Um, take that Colby test, the, the one that's 49 bucks, I can't remember if it's the Colby A or the Colby B index, but we have all of our team members take this Colby test now. And it's less its less so the team member can know what their score is. Uh, I know the first time I took the Colby test, I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, it kind of explains what I already knew about myself. Um, and the value wasn't really there, which, which is the way that most personality tests are. They kind of confirm what you already knew about yourself, right? Uh, but what, what a lot of us didn't do or don't do with personality tests is we, we don't take it any further. We go, okay, I know about myself, and then we don't take it any further. Where the magic really comes in at those personality tests when you're building a team uh, that helps you to discover who you should add to the team and why and where on your team you should add uh, is, is how your personality and how their personalities match and actually complement each other. So as an example, back to the personal assistant or executive assistant, uh, Jen on, on my team. And if you guys have not listened to our two part episode or two part series of the carrot cast fully on how to hire a personal assistant or executive assistant, how to train them, how to find them, why it's so important, how they can 10 X your productivity. Check out those episodes at carrotcast.com. Uh, so back to this. So Jen, my assistant is what's, what's called a high follow through low quick start. And on the Colby index score, basically it's, it's, it's four different things, right? You've got uh, what's called the fact finder. And fact finder just grades on a scale of one to 10, how you like to research things before taking action. You know, if you have to research a lot of stuff before taking action, let's say you're buying a TV and you're just researching, researching the heck out of it, uh, you're probably gonna be over a five on, on fact finder. Uh, if you're buying that TV or you know making a decision in your business and you just make decisions fast, oftentimes with very, very little information, you're probably gonna be lower on Fact Finder. And neither, it doesn't mean it's good or bad, it's just that's what you are, okay? Uh, follow through. Follow through is kind of like it sounds. Do you like to finish things? Do you like checklists? Do you like things being tidy and neat and done? You don't like to have 100 things open at any given time. Um, quick start is the idea is the visionary you like you're comfortable with change you're comfortable with moving between projects and the fourth one I don't remember what it is and we don't, we don't really look at that one much so when I went out to find 
uh, an executive assistant. This is four or five years ago now. Uh, the thing that I did was I identified exactly what gap and what role that person would fill in my life. And I'm not talking what, what specific tasks they would do. That's just something that's obvious. We need to, de- we need to nail the types of things we would delegate. Okay. But we want to make sure that we're delegating to the right type of person. And that person for me needs to be a high follow through kind of lower quick start. You know, so ideally I was looking for someone that was probably a two, three or four on quick start. I don't want someone that was over a five on quick start. Cause that means me and that person would just be ideas everywhere, right? Ideas everywhere and not getting any, anything done. And that's how I was before. Uh, and this person also needed to be over a five, ideally over a six on follow through because while I'm over here making ideas and getting excited about the next idea and, and, and casting a vision and diving into strategy on something, where I really, where I really fail is the follow through on it. And this is just me being insanely candid that if you've worked directly with me on a project um, to build out a custom solution with Carrot or whatever it is, uh, this is one of the biggest things I've, I, I still do want to work on, I still am working on completely. Uh, is following through better. Um, it, it's, it's really easy for me to say yes to things because I really do want to help people and I really do, do believe in that moment that I can do that, that I can get it done. But that's my high quick start uh, taking over. Then when it actually gets time to actually do the task, uh, I realize, man, I overcommitted myself. I, I, I don't have the time to do that. And if you don't have the high follow throughs on your team to finish those things that you committed to or to finish those things that you're visioning or to finish those things that you had that you had uh, created a strategy for, that's where we create businesses that, that go stagnant. That's where we get in a phase in our business or lives where we feel like we're busting our butts and there's all kinds of things happening, but you're kind of, you know, you're just barely going anywhere. It's kind of like Fred, Fred, Fred Flintstone, you know, his, his feet are just going a mile a minute, but the car is not going anywhere. And that's how I was, you know, uh, five, six years ago with some of my stuff. We were doing good, you know, but it wasn't going anywhere near where it should have. And I had so many pans in the fire, so many things unfinished. And I thought it was just because, man, I just need to focus better. And that was part of it. But the big part was because in those days, it was me and another quick start on my team that were trying to get stuff done. So it was me and another person that was a high quick start, lower follow through. And it was just a recipe for disaster because we would start all kinds of stuff. Our project management systems would be full of really, really good stuff. And then we would look back in two months and go, man, why, why haven't we made headway on this stuff? Okay. So what this is about, this is about working with your strengths, not working on your weaknesses. Okay. And I'm not saying that we should not work on our weaknesses. Uh, that's something I still want to be a better person at follow through, uh, because to me, it's an integrity issue, right? If I commit to something, which that's where learning how to say no more is really important. But if I commit to something, I want to make sure that I'm able to follow through or at least follow through enough to get it off to someone on my team who can successfully finish that for the client or for our team. Okay. So when I brought Jen aboard my team, she really helped to, to lock that down because now no longer was I taking notes, you know, pages of notes on strategy and brainstorming stuff, getting excited about that because I love that. I thrive in that. And then those going nowhere or them them getting locked in my computer or locked in my phone or locked in a notepad that I would have full intentions on revisiting to get those into something so we could take action on it. But rarely did those ever get to a point to where I would take action on them because my high quick start low fall through was taken over. Okay. So, but as soon as she came in, slowly we started to find ways to have our our Colby scores, the ways that we work, work together. And it took some time. I'm not going to say it happens overnight because there's some patterns that, that we all have to get over. Okay. Uh, with her, she, you know, of course struggled at the start and probably still today, uh, struggles with, with the volume of stuff coming, coming from me. And that's one thing that I've had to make sure that I tampen, you know, that I tamper sometimes is, is I, I have to understand if someone is a higher quick start and lower follow through and a little bit higher fact finder where they like to do research, you bulldozing them with a ton of ideas could really be counterproductive. So that's where, that's where a system comes in place. that's really handy of, uh, of collecting ideas. 
you know, where do you put your ideas and how do you make sure that wherever you're putting those ideas is connected to the person that's a high follow through on your team to help get them done. Okay. So for me, there's a couple places I put ideas now and I have my daily, I have my daily kind of productivity worksheet that uh, every day is on my desk. And this is kind of a good, a really good representation of high follow through a low quick start is I love my daily productivity sheet. I, I absolutely love it. And when I, when I use it, I crush the day, but I have a problem with following system. I love creating system. I have a problem following system. So when I did, when I, when I would run out of those daily productivity sheets, I wouldn't go print off more because it was like, well, I, I'm just on to the next thing already. And so I would get in this pretty big rut of not having my darn daily productivity sheet. So I recognized that and my assistant recognized it. And she's like, hey, so why aren't you using this anymore? I said, well, I ran out of them. She goes, well, you could have let me know to print them. And I go, I know, I just didn't want to bug you. I wasn't thinking about it. And that's my high quick start bouncing to the next thing before I tie this down. So what she did was she said, you know what, I'm just going to print a bunch off and always have you know 10 or 15 on your bookshelf behind you. And then uh, she just took it upon herself to always put a new one on my desk every morning uh, when I come in. So that kind of hijacks my propensity to see squirrels at the start of the day. And it really focuses me in on that first task at hand, which is getting my daily productivity worksheet filled out so we can all be more effective. Now, a really, really good offshoot benefit that happened from that, and this is the importance of having a high follow through on your team and working with your strengths and not on your weaknesses as much, is when I would be filling that out throughout the day, I'd be, I'd be discovering that there are things that I would send a, a, Slack, a Slack message to my assistant, Jen, and I would say, hey, you know, uh, would you mind checking on this or diving into that or doing this or whatever? And I started to get messages back from her saying, yep, already done. And I'm like, what the heck? You were, you're like reading my mind. And, and I ended up discovering that uh, she, she told me, she says, well, I, what I've started to do is I've started to come in after you fill out your worksheet and, uh, and I just I glance at it. And anything that looks like it's something that I can just take off of your lap because you're prone to say yes to stuff, uh, I, I take it. And um, that worksheet that we use now as a section and you guys can find this worksheet. Um, uh, put just go to carrotcast.com and find this episode, or uh, shoot, where do we have it? I think it's on carrot.com forward slash. We'll just do on carrot.com forward slash productivity. How about that? I just made that up. <laughs> we'll we will find a spot for it on carrot.com forward slash productivity. So anyway, so she she we also then created a section on that worksheet, or we borrowed it from uh, the person who made this worksheet. That is. Um, low urgency, high importance. That's the stuff that I probably need to be spending some time doing or map out some stuff that other people can do. And then there's low importance, high urgency. And if something's not important, but it's really urgent, usually that's stuff that you can delegate. You know, that's, hey, I've got to get a haircut scheduled. That's, um, hey, please give this person a call back and update their credit card information. Or, um, hey, can you please bounce back a quick note to this person or reach out to this person and get a quote for you know, a new roofing project for a property or whatever it is. Okay. That's all stuff that you can delegate off. That's not critical to the business that anyone can do if you give them direction enough. Okay. So now let me kind of bounce to other parts of your team and why understanding the way that people work is so important when you're building out that team and why this step is so important to hiring rock stars because you can hire the most amazing person in the world. They could be a perfect culture match. They could be amazing skill set practitioner. But if you're putting them in a role that requires, let's say, a really creative person that requires someone who can think on their toes, that requires someone to be visionary, and this person's a low quick start, you're just setting them up to fail. You know, we're setting them up to fail. Um, if you're needing someone who can get stuff done, who is just who's just relentless at at following process and creating process, and someone who is just a, an executioner, you know, it's the person who you're able to team up with, and and it, you might be the the visionary, you might be the person with a lot of ideas and strategy, and then you need someone to actually go and help to help to push that forward to make sure it gets done. Um, if that's the case. You know, you're just going to completely shoot yourself in the foot if you bring in a high quick start, low follow through. And we've done that in some roles. You know, we have uh, a guy on our team, Sean, amazing, perfect culture match, such a good energy to have in the office. Uh, his skill set is great. And for this particular role that we were hiring, going in, we knew we needed 
ideally over a five follow through. Uh, the quick start didn't matter as much to me. I just knew that I needed over a five follow through because this particular role just really needed to be organized. They needed to be on top of it and had him take the test and he was a three follow through eight quick start just like me. A little bit higher fact finder I think. Um, and I'm like, man, as much as, I, as every other part of me says that you're a perfect fit for this role, this right here concerns me. We had to talk about it before then. And uh, he's like, you know what? I can do it. We're going to make it happen. And and this just goes, goes to the fact that it's really hard for us to work against our nature. Okay. Um, and what happened was a few months in, we started to see a little bit of um, things slip a little bit, some projects, some deadlines, some missed stuff, uh, process not being followed. And this isn't a knock on Sean at all, because that's exactly what I honestly would do in that same role. And we did really did have him very busy too. So just to be fair, but what that was, was the high quick start, low follow through creeping up and he, he didn't have a good daily productivity schedule. Um, you know, he really, he really, we, we were probably putting too much on him to create process and should have probably brought in a high follow through person on our team to create process instead of putting it on him. And so what we ended up doing right now is we're just working on that because that role requires this. And uh, I had my my leadership coach come into the office to work with him for a little while and got him work, you got him using that daily productivity sheet that we use that you can download it on carrot.com forward slash uh, productivity. And uh, so that's what we're kind of doing there. In that particular role, we honestly are working kind of on his weakness there because that particular role needs it. And we just all realized that we, I don't think we made a mistake, just didn't really trust the data that like we should have to get him in that, in the right role to start. Okay. So anyway, I was talking with uh, a, a buddy of mine, Jeff, uh, Jeff Koga, and he's a really experienced entrepreneur. And, and uh, we'd just gotten this conversation yesterday, actually. And, and he was one of the guys that inspired me doing this episode right now. Cause he said, man, you got to do a podcast on, on the exact stuff we talked about in that call. And he's having similar a similar situation, you know, where he just seems like he slams, seems like the to-do list is never getting lower. Seems like there's always more stuff on the to-do list and fewer things getting done. Uh, a lot of stuff that you that you end up doing during the day isn't even on the damn to-do list uh, to start out. And like I said, that's just a complete byproduct of high quick start, low follow through because you make your to-do list and you're always gonna have more ideas and more vision uh, and, and more things to do that come up that, that come up in your brain, then you're going to have the energy and the stamina to finish. So that's why we, we end up getting that result of a, in a, an ever expanding to-do list. It seems like we're never getting ahead of it. And, and, and so Jeff is going to work now to, to try to see if he can't get a really good personal assistant. And he's already, he, he's had a virtual assistant for quite some time. It seems like who's overseas and it seems like that person is probably pretty darn proficient. But there's some things that I really feel strongly uh, can only be done locally. You know, that thing like I mentioned with my assistant, Jen, popping her head in my office and looking at my daily productivity sheet, that could only happen locally. That couldn't happen from someone, you know, outside of my town. Uh, you know, me, me just being really, really bad at not wanting to, to inconvenience people and also me being really bad at not making lunches or or, or making sure I, I actually stop for lunch many times. I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that, especially a high quick starts. Um, so what, what she has done is she's seen that and she'll ask me, hey, can, you want me to get lunch today? And my propensity is like, no, you know, I, I don't want to bug you and I'm, I'm fine. I'll figure it out. You know, I'll grab something. And probably nine times out of 10, I would not do it. That was just me not wanting to bug her, not wanting to inconvenience anyone. Yeah, fully hoping and thinking that I would actually get my lunch, but then really coming to the realization, of course, that it probably wasn't going to happen, right? So she started to, to see that and she started to see, well, how can I support Trevor in doing this? Because I know his nature is to not want to, to ask for help, which I'm getting better at. And his nature is also uh, to not follow through in a lot of stuff like that. So oftentimes she'll get me lunch and just bring it in the office. Sometimes she'll ask me if she knows I don't have lunch that day. And, uh, she'll say, Hey, do you need lunch? I'll say, oh, I'm good. 
Um, unless I'm smart and say, you know what, Jen, I really would love some lunch or something like that. She'll go and get it anyway because she knows that I probably won't get it. So find someone like that who is high follow through and just very, very nurturing there. Okay. So some other parts of your team. So let's say you are, are the high quick start and low follow through. And let's say you're a real estate investor or agent or it doesn't matter, but let's say you're, you're, you're in business. Okay. Um, once you have that, that executive assistant in place or that personal assistant in place, so what, what types of people should you be hiring next? Well, I think it really depends on the type of business, but, but likely the mix of people around you, the mix of people around you in your business is likely going to be higher follow through people, uh, you know, through your, probably your, your, through your first five to six people in your team. Because if you're a very high quick start, lower follow through, it's almost like you have to overcompensate with people that are tackling different parts of the business, but are high follow through that can get shit done. Okay. So those are probably going to be your first several hires is people that are high follow through on Colby and people that are great culture match. And of course that match the skill set you need. Okay. Uh, then after that, you're probably going to get one or two people that you need to be, have creatives and have, have visionaries in there. Because once you get to a point where you're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten employees or ten team members, that's where you can't be the only visionary. You, you can't be the only creative on the team. Okay. You're likely going to need to have some people, especially if you're looking at content marketing, you're going to likely need to have some people who are that creative, who are the person who's, who's kind of visionary on thinking four steps ahead on what that prospect is wanting to see so you can create content for it or so you can create the marketing campaigns for it and get creative with your marketing campaigns. Okay, so you're, you're gonna have to kind of find the good mix there. But I would highly, highly suggest that as you decide to build out your team, uh, first of all, like we've talked about a lot of episodes of the Carrot Cast, the first thing you're gonna do for hiring is you gotta nail your core values. What is it that you believe in? What is it that you believe in as a person, as a human being, and as a business that that is baked into every single thing you guys do? And not just in business, but every single thing you do in life. Uh, with Carrot, our core values are so, so intertwined with everything we do, with our product, with the way we hire, with the way that we uh, fire, the way that we promote within the organization, the way that we seek out customers, the way that we market, uh, the way that we do commu team communications and celebrations, that's all so intertwined in our core values. Okay, so it's so important. That's the first thing we got to nail. And in one of the episode, one of the future episodes in this series of hiring, we'll talk about core values in a big way. All right, the next thing that we've got to nail is, of course, we've got to be crazy, crazy clear what the skill set is that we need to fill. And that one is sometimes kind of hard, especially in your first five hires, because sometimes that person needs to do all kinds of things. You know, I, I, I can kind of think back even even now with, with 10 full-time people or hiring another three to four, even now, our team in general you know, does lots of different things. There's only a couple people on our team that are specialists that only do one thing and maybe even just one person, if that, I'm trying to think. So, you know, all the way through your first team member to probably 10, maybe even a couple more, uh, those people are going to probably be focusing the majority of their time on one particular uh, pain point or bottleneck in your business that you're looking to remove or amplify um, an opportunity but then they're going to need to be doing a bunch of other different things too, since you're a small business. Okay. As an example, uh, the first person I ever hired on the marketing team was Alex on my team about two years ago, young kid. He was my first intern, uh, here at carrot. And, uh, then he went off and got a job and we ended up hiring him uh, about a year after that. And he's a high fall through lower quick start. Okay. So what we needed in that, in that department was I'm like, I had no lack of ideas for, for things to market. What I had problems with was sitting down and getting it done. And uh, I'd have a bunch of articles written. I'd have this going. I'd be analyzing some SEO stuff. I'd, had the, I'd have this ad going. I'd write this copy for this page. You know, I'd do this. I'd do that. I'd make a bunch of phone calls for customers. Um, and, of course, that's just not sustainable. And um, my nature is to want to do all that stuff but to leave a lot of loose ends open. So bring Alex in, and he was just immediately the type of person who – gets fidgety if he doesn't get, if, if there's not like a, a mission to be, um, taken on he, he gets fidgety, you know, if there's not something to be improving or something to be implementing. So that dude, you could, you could pass him anything and he's just a master implementer. He's going to go and get it done. 
he's probably going to get it done before you ever even thought it was going to, going to get done. And he's probably getting a lot, a lot of stuff done before you ever, ever even ask to get them done it's because he just loves to implement. And then him and I have a good time, uh, strategizing. And that's one thing I'm really looking at, uh, at empowering more and bringing more out as a skill set within him. But that was my first hire on the, on the marketing team was a high follow through people and implementer. Okay. The person that could hold us to a marketing calendar, that could make sure we would do the marketing calendar, that would make sure that we would actually hop on and, and do the marketing planning meetings, that would, that would be tabulating our KPIs, our key performance indicators. Uh, every single week we do KPIs on our Monday calls and man, I, I, I just couldn't do it. You know, I, I love the fact of looking at the data but I get dragged down by and I completely find every squirrel in the world to, to chase except for actually tabulating the KPIs when it comes down to it. I love the strategy. I don't like the process of doing it. So Alex is, is just nails that process, comes and delivers the KPIs, explains why they happen, where they happen, successes, some breaking points. It's just a magical, magical thing for us in the business. And I can keep on going on and on about every single hire that we've hired and why we've, we've, we've hired them. But that third thing when you're hiring, that third thing after culture fit, it's gotta be a perfect culture fit because uh, it's really tough to teach culture, it's really tough to teach empathy, it's really tough to teach those intangibles. Skill set can be taught, okay, as long as as long as they have the aptitude to learn it, you know. So if, if it's a if it's a programmer and they're like a perfect, or if you're hiring for a programmer role, you know, and uh, and they're a perfect culture match, and you're like, oh, they're perfect, but if if you don't know that they really enjoy programming that they've already started it and they have an aptitude for it that can start and make an impact day one of course they're not going to be a fit okay but if if you're hiring for a marketing you know a marketing person they're a perfect culture fit they came into the interview with great ideas for marketing already they came into the interview uh giving you ideas and how they think you can improve your marketing and and they seem like they're a higher follow-through that can help you implement your ideas as well you can totally teach them marketing. You can give them books. You can do things like that. If you're not a good marketer, you should probably hire a good marketer. Okay, that person needs to have that skill set because you're going to be hard pressed to teach them because you don't know about it. Okay, but if you're a great marketer, you need a great implementer. All right, um, and then that third part, like I said, is the Colby score. Is just really, really knowing how they work. So a culture match, the skill set, and then how do they work, and does that work in the way that's going to best help them be successful and best help our team be successful, okay? And we are just relentless with this. I've made this mistakes in the past. I'm not gonna make them again as far as trusting those those things. There's different things you can do to test on culture fit. There's things, you, there's questions you can ask. You can see how they would answer questions. Is that the way that someone that believes in what you believe in would answer them, okay? Um, uh, you know, always genuinely caring is one of our core values. Uh, you, you, you can you can pose questions to them, written or verbal, that, that kind of elicit how they actually care about people. You know, if they're having a massive feud with their their parents, it's gone on for a decade, and they won't amend it. There might be an issue with with caring. There might be an issue with some things there that might not be a culture match for you, right? Or that might be an opportunity for you to go in and help to amplify and help to to uh, help that person. And then on the Colby on the Colby side of things, that's going to be pretty cut and dry. Once you kind of discover what their score is, ask them some questions. Say, hey, you know, so are you more apt to to love to to whiteboard and to love to to ideate, or are you more apt to take a plan and actually get it done? And if you're looking for someone who can execute and get done, they better answer that question, man. I absolutely love implementation. Like it's, the answer should not be, yeah, I, I I totally like to get stuff done, but I, I love strategy better. It's like man, you better be relentless on execution because me as a high quick start, um, I can guarantee you it's going to be hard for me to, to keep tabs on you. You're going to have to keep tabs on yourself and just make sure that you're delivering on your goals and your KPIs that we've set for your role. All right. So anyway, uh, that's about 30 minutes. Just kind of chatting through some things I talked about at the talk here at, at Oregon Tech. I'm about 45 minutes outside of my house right now. It's not raining, which is awesome. Uh, spring is one of the best times of year out here in Oregon. We've had the most rainy and snow, snowy season that I've ever had in Roseburg and going on nine years now. Uh, we actually had a landslide at our house, almost took out our deck <laughs> going down the river. 
So I can't wait until the summer, can't wait until the spring, and uh, we can get on the river, we can enjoy enjoy things a lot more. But I hope you kind of got some stuff from this. I don't think this episode needs to be any longer. And I'm just going to do a series of these 30-minute, you know, max 40-minute episodes on hiring on each section of it. Hopefully you guys can get some, some tidbits out of it. But the Colby score is a biggie. How do you work and how can you fill those gaps so you work more effectively? And then just make sure that you find a way to find those people pay for those people because they're going to more than pay for themselves as long as it's the right person and you're doing your job being a good leader. All right. So go out there, go out there, find the yin to your yang, take your Colby test, just look it up online, K-O-L-B-E. And it's like, I can't remember which one it is. Like I said, I think it's a Colby A index. It's 49 bucks and it's testing basically you as a personality. Okay. Take that. If you have any people on your team, have all those people take the Colby uh, the Colby Index as well because I guarantee you it's probably going to bring to light a lot of stuff that you guys are going to go, oh my gosh, that's why we have that issue. That's why we have that problem. Okay, we took that test internally about a year, year and a half into the business and uh, my CTO, like I said, my co-founder, uh, Chris, he uh, is a higher quick start and really low follow through. Okay, so it was very apparent after we took the test and went, man, now I know why sometimes we kind of butt heads on some communication issues and some projects. Like we love each other, but we definitely do butt heads on some stuff, you know, and it's usually where, where I come out with probably way too many ideas and Chris sees it as possibly distracting, which he's probably hundred percent correct. Um, or I toss out an idea and he sends back a message that just says like, nope, or can't do that or something like that. And I can guarantee, I got so frustrated the first several times I saw that. I'm like, how how can he tell me that we can't do that? I own the company. It's like, you know, I, I got really frustrated by that the first few times I saw that. And I'm sure you guys can relate where, where you, you know, for a split second, like your heart starts to kind of beat a little bit fast. I'm like, all right, calm down. Let me pull back and see his context and see how I can communicate differently knowing he's a lower quick start and a higher follow through, which he needs to check the boxes. He needs to get the stuff done. He loves having a vision to follow, okay? And he's amazing at helping to clarify a vision, clarify that stuff. But where where it would fall apart is if he didn't give me context for why he was saying no. So now he's a lot better at going, okay, no, we can't do that, but here's why. I'm like, okay, cool. So that satisfied my, my, my high quick start in that, okay, cool. So we considered it and then it's not going to work or we considered it, but it's not good for right now. And and Chris said, I will add it to our project management system to to check back on later. And that satisfied me as a high quick start yanking it out of my brain, getting the idea out of my brain, but then cataloging it somewhere so we can come back to it later if it's still important. And then on the flip side of it, uh, you know, Chris really, really needs to see that very clear vision. He needs to see that very clear vision for, for, uh, why the product needs to be built out this way, how it's going to work, how it's specifically going to relate and connect with our customers. And I need to make sure that when I'm presenting ideas, I pull back and explain uh, my why behind it rather than barraging him with ideas. All right. So anyway, hopefully you guys got some stuff out of this. Uh, check out the other episodes of the Carrot Cast and hopefully the audio quality was okay. Uh, like I said, I am driving on this episode and if it works out, I might do some more episodes driving because uh, I have about a 20 minute drive to work every day. And I want to help you guys build your teams out because I can just tell you that my world and my business has been so much more fulfilling building a great team of people around me, building an amazing team of people who are excited about the work they do. Of course, there's always crap work in every single person's job, but in general, we try to put people in positions that they can thrive, that they enjoy the work that they're doing, they see room for growth, they see an impact that we're actually making in the world, and uh, and and not you know last but not least. They're perfectly suited to actually tackle that task at hand and finish it with their Colby score. All right? So have an amazing rest of the week. Go take the Colby test. Report back to me in the comments what your Colby score is and any questions you have on it. And until next time, we'll talk soon.